Agronac Cultist. How the hell are ya? Today, we're gonna be taking a look at Into the Weird and Wild by Feral Indie Studio and Wet Ink Games. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss an upload and join the conversation over at the Agronac Cult Discord. All right, let's get into it. Hell yeah, Into the Weird and Wild by Charles Ferguson Avery. Now, we've had this book for quite some time. Yeah, in PDF form, but I just got the physical copy. How'd you do that? Found it on eBay. Most of the time, these things are going for up over a, well over a hundred dollars. Yeah, it's crazy. But you can get the PDF of this, no problem. There's a link down in the dungeon. So this is sort of like a retro review, huh? Yeah, kind of. This came out in 2021. There was a Kickstarter and yeah, I was introduced to this, uh, saw a review of it uh, about that time and picked it up. Nice. Let's take a look. If you don't have this book, let me just tell you, it's one of my favorite modern books ever. Really? That good? Absolutely. Now, what's so good about it? I'd have to say the flavor. This is not necessarily a setting, though you can treat it as one. Ah, oh, okay. Nice. Just to give you a little bit of background, this is not about dungeon crawling, it's about wilderness crawling, and that the wilderness is evil and um, can bring you into states of despair. Sounds like my kind of book. So there's rules of the wilding way, beasts of branch and bone, so that's your monster compendium right here, about 50 different unique monsters, really flavorful, factions of the weird and wild, Artifacts of the Wild Hunter, Magic of the Weird, The Dungeon of Tree and Stone, and A Hundred Weird Locations, an Appendix, Index, etc. This is a system-neutral book, so you can use this in any system that you want. Oh, I really love system-neutral settings. Yeah, and this really is, uh, without being too specific about settings, you can plop this thing down in any wilderness that you want. You can use it as a smorgasbord of just ideas and monsters and places and interesting magic items and all of that. Um, or you can pretty much just jump right in and this is your setting. I really like that. And the art throughout is done by uh, Charles Ferguson Avery. Um, there's a few other pieces that are done by other people, but for the most part, it's done by this person. So it's written and drawn by one person. Do you want to read this? Sure. Beyond the reach of roads, past the scope of mortals, there is a darkened place. A shadowed tree line where no one dares cross and whose boundaries go undisturbed. I already love it. Totally. So what is the weird and wild? The wilds are the haunting and dangerous wilderness that lies beyond the eyes of civilization. I actually really dig art that's like this where it's unfinished. It's more like a sketch. Really dig it, especially uh, when contrasted with the finished work that is in here. It just uh, gives that vibe of a field manual that somebody's uh, drawing notes in. Yeah, really dig that. Very cool. Starts off here, Rules of the Wilding Way. Uh, in this book, you will see um, D6s, D8s, and D50s used. D50? Yeah, it's not a normal die that you see, but it uses D50 tables, which are really cool. And as we speak, I'm waiting for Amazon to deliver my D50. Um, I don't know if they're going to make it or not. We'll see. There's the rule of gold, which translates gold into supplies. It's an interesting idea. I don't really use this. Uh, I have been using this book for over a year now, at least in my campaigns, there's certain things in here that have just been so flavorful and well uh, introduced, really, into my campaign world. But one of the things I really like is exhaustion and how it lays that out. And you basically get six levels, and at six, you die, and that's that. Wow, that's pretty brutal. Yeah. So, and you can get exhaustion a lot in this. And then there's possible uh, exhaustion effects, like for instance, uh, becoming nihilistic. 
disadvantage against magic and breath weapon. So there's different things and rules in here that are just crazy awesome and flavorful. And that's what this is all about. It's about the flavor. And it's more like, um, what, what would be a good way to say this? It's like all the cool magic items that you wanted to use and give flavor into your campaign. Like for me, it was the hand and eye of Vecna. One of the classics of all time. Totally. And this book is basically like those sort of really dark things all rolled up into a setting that you can use and plug into your current world. It's brilliantly done. So it talks about surviving the night and there's a 3D6 that you would roll and it's about attempting the camp. And if you roll low, you end up suffering exhaustion, which plays into all the different mechanics that are in here. Hey, I see UPS. Oh, they're here. Yeah, they're going up the street though. So I'll have that D50 soon and I'll actually plop it down and we'll roll on some of those D50 tables. This talks about the hunt and uh, how to hunt for creatures, how to track them and everything else. It's really flavorful. And instead of just having your ranger roll a single D6, there's actually a method where you select your quarry and determine your marks, roll your dice, consult the tracking result chart, uh, tally the marks and repeat steps three and four, which is rolling the dice and control, uh, consulting the tracking chart. So, um, and then depending on whether you get major or minor setbacks or a possible boon and the results you can get there. Really cool. Oh, stuff about cleaning the body. So you find some weird animal out in the forest and there you go. You can clean it and get good things, bad things, or in between things. Yeah, you can survive off the weird crap that you might find in the weird and wild. Moon phases, and I love that he quotes Gary Gygax right here. You cannot have a meaningful campaign if strict time records are not kept. Yeah, I guess you don't want to have a full moon every time the characters get together and something weird happens. Yeah, that just doesn't make sense. But if they know that a full moon's about ready to happen, you can pump up the volume and really bring out the gruesome and the terrifying. The call of the wild. So as you gain exhaustion or are in the weird and wild for more than a month, or it, it talks about uh, uncovering a terrible secret, different things that are possible triggers for a call to the wild, then there's a role. If people fail, then crap can happen to them. And this is one of those D50 tables. I really want to have my die, so hopefully that uh, UPS guy gets here quick. I'm going to go ahead and pause my recording and come right back, hopefully with that D50, so we can roll on this uh, Call of the Wild. All right, see you in right now. All right, Amazon just showed up. <laughs> All right, what's in here? Ooh, I got a few other things. Reaper, henchmen and hirelings, 13 henchmen and hirelings, a griffin. Let me know if you want to watch me paint these on a live stream or not. Well, that would be cool. And here's the D50. That's not mustard, that's paint. I gotta sand this down now. <laughs> All right, D50. Rolls forever. I'm gonna need a dice box. That's the thing with these D50 dice is you definitely need a box to roll because they'll just keep on rolling. All right, let's roll on this table, yeah? And something awesome about these books, if you can find one, they've got great two great ribbons in here. Um, it's just, I don't know. It's just so much better for me personally to have the physical book. Yeah, there's nothing quite like the physical. Yeah, it's not that I'm against or opposed to digital. It's just physical's way better. To me, anyways. All right, let's roll on this call to the wild. Let's say you failed your check and you're going to gain a result from the call of the wild. I'm going to go ahead and roll over here on my box. And we got a six. You want to read that? All right. You can sense heartbeats within 15 feet of you. It comes as a slight vibration inside your skull, allowing you to sense the exact location of a living creature, 
even without vision or sound. The wild turns you in to a wild creature yourself. I mean, it has like a depiction here of like, this is the crap that can happen. You can grow horns. You're going to gain these superior senses, etc. Wow, that's pretty freaking cool. It really, that call of the wild ends up becoming like something that you might want to morph your entire campaign into because there's so many awesome benefits. Well, this is interesting. The eight is missing paint. All right, a whole section on becoming lost and how to deal with that. And madness, which is uh, one of my favorite things. Um, I think it's way more flavorful than what you might get in 5th edition. This is just really cool. Um, and you can, uh, yeah, get quirks or madness or deep madness. So, for instance, uh, these are all D6s. So, let me roll a D6 here. So, a 6 here. Auto cannibalism. You are constantly picking off and eating pieces of yourself. Hair, skin, scabs. It all must be collected and returned to your body. Yeah, that's gross. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Uh, number two. The wilds are hungry. It will eat you all if you're not careful. But you know what to do. If you offer up a meal and some of your supplies to the wilds every night, you'll all be safe. No one must stop you. No one must know. Ah, so you're getting a little bit more crazed. And the number five, the grand ritual. Sigils, signs, numbers, words, places, time. Your mind swims with the weight of these desperate thoughts. But it makes sense to you. All of these ideas are pieces of something larger, a great and powerful ritual unlike any the world has seen, and you have been blessed as its architect. Nothing must stop you. It is too important. Man, I really dig that. This is cool. Love the madness. All right, beasts of branch and stone. There's 50 of these beasts in here. And again, they're system neutral. So it's, it's basically coming from an OSR sort of mentality, but you can really adapt it to anything, including like easy D6. One of my favorite is the Arcanus Arachne, or maybe that's Arachni, but it, it's basically this arachnid, this spider, right? But sometimes it has this little area right here where there's an uncommon good. You want to read it? Yeah, scroll web. The delicate gossamer threads weave together into arcane inscriptions and glyphs, beautiful and primal in their construction. Each web contains one random spell of third level or lower and function in almost every way like a spell scroll. However, they can only be transported with a careful removal, placement on a flat surface and preparation with a bonding agent, all of which takes at least an hour. That's really friggin' cool. Yeah, so flavor, flavor, flavor in this. Awesome stuff. Blight motes, blue stound, bramble bees, so on and so forth. Cacophonous crowmen, and they like speak in these predictions and you can roll on these predictions really cool man i love it children of the woods cinder shams curse wield and here's a curse wield i used this in my homebrew campaign last year to great effect devil stag so on and so forth i use dragon ticks as well and what's awesome is that the blood of the dragon ticks act as a healing potion so you can heal if you drink its blood i oh, love that dryadi different types of dryadi ether rat i really love the idea of the moon slaver and just this weird like flying creature insectoid type that glows like moonlight really cool and then enslaves those that are around crazy stuff i really dig that
Oracle Sludge, Primal Skull, so on and so forth. So there's a lot of monsters in here. Factions of the Weird and Wild. The Court of Broken Branches. Now this is really cool. As you uh, might get damaged, messed up, etc., your characters, if they have been left to die or whatever, can um, call out to this uh, queen of broken beings. And what's awesome, there's a great backstory here. Um, I love the runic inscriptions that actually it talks about them dancing around on her flesh, which is a really cool visual. And But you become basically a servant of her. And if she calls you to right some sort of wrong that is in the weird and wild, you have to obey. And it's wonderful. I dig that. And there's a bunch of these, right? Yeah, I think like four. The children of Iacromoran uh, or Creomoran, um, which is cool. It's like a bunch of beasts that are one. It's like it's one entity, but it's broken up into these different ones. And when you speak with it, it speaks in riddles. And only each one of these creatures can speak one word. But as they speak, they gather up and then only one speaks and then another and then another and then another that creates some sort of riddle that you need to figure out. Dude, that's fucking awesome. Yeah, it's really awesome. The Ruin, just a... A freaking hack master. Uh, anytime anyone is spilling blood, this guy is in charge. The wild elves, and I do have wild elves in my setting. They weren't necessarily these, but I may turn them into these. Um, really dark and wonderful. And the primal wheel and primal deities and just great, great stuff. All right, artifacts of the wild hunter. Let's take one of these. Um, All right, the Bone Shard Shiv. A knife appears made from a femur or humerus. Its edge is serrated and is hard as steel. There is no marks of craft or make, as if it grew this way. A blade sung into shape by the wild elves, created as a perfect weapon for an assassin or backstabber. The Bone Shard Shiv functions in all ways like a dagger or knife. However, when pressed against the owner's skin and gently hummed to, the life melds into the flesh. It can be summoned at any time, bursting out without any harm to the wielder. <laughs> yeah, dude, so cool. I love the darkness of this. I love the, um, just the depravity of what is in the weird and wild just there's a reason to fear the weird and the wild good friggin stuff in here great Th there's just tons of these different like magical items to be found then there's magic of the weird i think uh, there's spells that go through one through four or so uh spell level i think they go up to oh here's a fifth level one I think that's as far as I go. So it's very OSR minded. Let's read one. Here's one. Uh, a fifth level spell, coffin nail, range 120 feet, uh, casting time one action, duration permanent. A single nail flies from your hand with a bang, immediately impaling itself into the head of another creature, paralyzing it and rendering it helpless. The caster makes a ranged attack. If it hits... The target of the spell is immediately permanently paralyzed and crumples to the ground in a limp, motionless state. They are utterly unresponsive and incapable of moving or acting on their own. The only way to undo the state is by forcibly removing the nail from the victim's skull with a successful strength check. Material components, a nail from a coffin. At higher levels, you may attack an additional creature for every level beyond fifth. Love it. So brand new spells that are dark and kind of messed up. Absolutely. And I love it, love it, love it. So I'm definitely going to be uh, throwing these spells at my current group because they're just too awesome not to have. So it gets into the dungeon of tree and stone and basically talks about how to take the wilderness and turn it into a dungeon. Uh, talks about generating the dungeon, 
how to use a six mile hex and then turn it into individual hexes, rolling a D eight, which tells you how many D sixes. And then you actually drop the D sixes in this area. And then whatever number comes up kind of informs what, um, what the area is, what its size is. So like a one is a stump, all uh, a stump size thing or large puddle or all the way up to a six, a ruined abbey or acre of trees. It shows you how to connect the areas with different trails uh, from a footpath, difficult trail, dangerous trail, special trail, and a hidden trail. Very nice. And then how to connect those even outside of that. So if you're into hex crawls and you're over land a lot and don't necessarily want to go into a ton of dungeons, this might be right up your alley. Really great, especially for solo play, I think. Wild Flora, you want to read one of these? Yeah, the Banshee Moral. Yep, right here. A mushroom sprouts from warm, shaded soil. Its neck is fat as a log, and its head is a soft flesh that resembles many skulls fused together. A dull whistle can be heard from its head. Uses. When threatened, the mushroom will push air from their head, creating a piercing wail that causes deafness for 1d6 hours, save versus poison to avoid. They can be cut down and dried and have been used as odd makeshift trumpets. Wow, I like that. Yeah, frigging awesome. Tons of flora to be discovered. They've got diseases that is something sorely missed, I think. And there's just some great stuff in here. Just great stuff. Um, let me read one. Spell scum, a bane of mages. Their eyes go rancid and their magic awry, appearing as a greenish milky crust around reddened eyes. It is nothing more than a slight nuisance to non-spellcasters. Spellcasters find their spells being erratic and dangerous. The infection is contact. So, another victim. Effect. Each day you must make a save or any time you cast a spell, it is randomly selected from your available spells. Cure. Two successful saves in a row or an elixir made from Oracle Sludge, which is one of the monsters, special herbs, and hot grain alcohol. Very cool. So it's detailed enough to give you specifics so that you're not making up a bunch of stuff, and uh, and wonderful. Yes. Hazards and traps. Did I, did I mention you should just go get this supplement? It is uh, just wonderful. Awesome. All right, here's... Um, some random tables I'm gonna roll using my fresh D50. And uh, so I search the body. 46, 1D6 books containing dark children's tales regarding the wilds. Oh, that could be helpful. Yes, it can. Random trails and paths. I got an eight. The trail is made of the partially buried spine of some colossal corpse. Awesome. That's a whole adventure in and of itself. Totally. All right. A wilderness dungeon. We're going to name it. 29. Um, Meyer. That's the prefix. And then 31 is the suffix of silence. Meyer of silence. Great. The danger is 26. Seeming shelters are always trapped. That's cool. 35. The crumbling tower of a demigod who weeps sapphire tears. You're going to be rich. <laughs> yes. All right. A walk through the woods. Let's see. Uh, what's the wilderness scene? 22. Ridge of metamorphic rock juts up angrily. Love that. 18. Sunken trees coated in stringy moss. Oh, this is cool. Smells and sounds. Let's come up with one. What do they smell or what do they hear? 30. Something is stifling a laughter. Malicious chuckles slip out. <laughs> wow. So the darkness is real in the weird and wild. Yes. Yes, totally. All right. Weird and wild encounters. 
38. Bramble Beast. Bristling with thorn and claw. The mood, if you roll a 1 to 3, stalks and strikes when the time is right. 4 to 5, it's hungry. Looking for an easy meal. 6. Curious. Watches from a distance. I love that. Love, love, love it. Now, 100 weird locations. You roll this on a D100. So let me roll and I'm going to have you read, Zoth. All right, cool. So 89. Let's flip to that page. And you can see how it's marked on the sides here to give you a good reference. 89. Talisman Garden. The tree limbs extend in long stretching trails. The sound of wooden wind chimes echo from somewhere above. There, tied throughout the treetop canopy, are thousands of tiny little effigies and talismans, each more hideous than the last. Love it. Love it. A great setup. I've actually used this one um, where this dragon was in a great war and was impaled on these trees and has been here for hundreds of years. And I used that in my last campaign to great effect. It was a very memorable thing. And there are memorable things throughout this entire book. There's the appendix, quick charts, and blank sheets, and an index. So awesome. Don't hesitate. Here's the one thing I don't like about this book. There's something not to like? Yeah. It's the fact that you can't find the fucking book. Oh yeah, if there's anything, that would be it. I like the physical. Um, hopefully they do another Kickstarter. Uh, Wet Ink Games has a whole line of products. But why this is not one that is standard, I don't understand. Um, please make more books. This is a must for any serious dungeon master that loves the dark and the twisted. Go get it. Again, there's a link in the dungeon, so go and check it out. All right, everyone. Thanks for stopping by Agronax Studios today, and we'll see you on the next one. Later. This video was brought to you by the generous support of our patrons. Consider becoming a patron so you can help us make more content like this. Or get yourself a t-shirt below. Later. Ma! All right. Do this and do that and do this and do that. And watch this video.